Welcome to Fantastic Vision. Please subscribe us before you watch today's video. In a speech at the World Knowledge Forum, Chris Miller, an American economic historian and author of The Chip Wars, highlighted the key reasons why China's chips have broken through the blockade and reached parity with the United States in the field of AI. He believes that Chinese companies recognized the dangers of the chip sanctions early on and promptly implemented countermeasures, importing large quantities of semiconductor equipment and materials from the Netherlands, Japan, South Korea, and other countries, preparing for the subsequent blockade restrictions. Data from Semi, Semiconductor Equipment and Materials International, shows that China imported $36.6 billion worth of semiconductor equipment in 2023, accounting for one-third of global sales that year. At the time, semiconductor equipment primarily came from companies like ASML of the Netherlands, Applied Materials of the United States, and Tokyo Electron of Japan. At one point, it even contributed 45% of applied materials revenue. By 2024, China's overseas equipment imports had reached over $40 billion, but these were primarily sourced from the Netherlands and Japan, while equipment from American companies declined. Why import semiconductor equipment from the Netherlands, Japan, and the United States? Many netizens wonder why China imports so much semiconductor equipment from the United States, Japan, and the Netherlands. This is because these three countries control 91.6% of the global semiconductor equipment market. The United States accounts for 41.7%, Japan for 31.1%, and the Netherlands for 18.8%. ASML of the Netherlands is the world's leading lithography equipment company, controlling 95% of DUV lithography equipment and 100% of EUV lithography equipment. Lithography equipment is essential for chip manufacturing, accounting for 25% of wafer fabrication. EUV lithography equipment is a key tool in the production of advanced chips. Lamin Research's Flex Series etchers offer high precision and low damage rates, making them ideal for 3D NAND memory chips with 128 layers or more. Applied Materials of the United States boasts world-leading ion implanters, including beam ion implanters, medium beam ion implanters, and ultra-high-dose ion implanters. Tokyo Electron of Japan boasts powerful coating and developing equipment, with a global market share exceeding 80%. Equipment investment accounts for 80% of the investment in a wafer fab. For example, SMIC's 28 nanometers wafer fab in Shenzhen, with a total investment of $2.35 billion, accounts for $1.88 billion of the total. Thus, in the face of insufficient domestic equipment, Chinese wafer fabs must purchase equipment from overseas to expand production. Chinese wafer fabs are undergoing a de-Americanization process. In 2021, China imported $23.8 billion worth of semiconductor equipment, of which $6.88 billion, or 28.9%, was from the United States, reaching its peak. In 2022, the U.S. Department of Commerce implemented semiconductor export restrictions, preventing advanced equipment from applied materials, LAM Research, and KLA Tenka from entering the Chinese market leading to a significant decline in revenue for U.S. equipment companies in China. By 2024, China's equipment imports reached $44.39 billion, nearly doubling from 2021. However, 29% of this equipment came from Japan, 22% from the Netherlands, and only 10% from the United States. In terms of value, Japanese equipment imports have exceeded $10 billion, and Dutch equipment is also approaching $10 billion, while equipment from the United States has declined from a peak of $6.88 billion to $4.47 billion. This significant increase and decrease demonstrates a crucial step in China's wafer fabs to Americanization efforts. Tokyo Electron of Japan stated that, unable to purchase American equipment, 
Japanese and Korean equipment is highly attractive to Chinese businesses, potentially enhancing China's chip manufacturing technology. ASML of the Netherlands is actively expanding its operations in China and has established a technical service base in Wuxi. The company will continue to strengthen its collaboration with Chinese companies, actively engaging in technology research and development, production and talent development. Import and export data released by the Korea International Trade Association shows that South Korean semiconductor equipment exports to China increased by 42.2% in 2024. Half of this equipment was delivered to Samsung's 11-in factory and SK Hynix's Wuxi factory, while the remaining half was sold to Chinese wafer manufacturers. China's rapidly developing semiconductor equipment market after the U.S. Department of Commerce introduced export restrictions on semiconductor equipment in 2022, it subsequently applied pressure on Japan and the Netherlands. On May 23, 2023, the Japanese government introduced export control measures for semiconductor equipment, which took effect on July 23 of the same year. These restrictions restricted the export of 23 types of equipment across six categories, covering multiple processes, including chip lithography, etching, ion implantation, thin film deposition, and masking, including advanced EUV technology. At the same time, the US pressured the Dutch government to revoke ASML's license to export DUV lithography machines to China, preventing some models of immersion DUV lithography machines from entering the Chinese market. However, China's chip industry development strategy is clear and its goals are well defined. Despite the US, Japan, and the Netherlands restricting equipment exports, China can still purchase manufacturing equipment that does not contain US technology, which undoubtedly provides Chinese chip companies with a breathing space. First, they purchased equipment from abroad to develop the chip industry while simultaneously learning related technologies. Then, they gradually developed independently controllable domestic semiconductor equipment, thus establishing a unified Chinese chip industry chain. Currently, China has achieved localization of nine key types of semiconductor equipment, including lithography machines, etching machines, photoresist coating and developing machines, ion implantation machines, thin film deposition equipment, chemical mechanical cutting equipment, packaging and testing equipment, measurement equipment, and cleaning equipment. The guiding catalogue for the promotion and application of the first major technological equipment, issued by the Ministry of Industry and Information Technology last year, highlighted new technical improvements for domestically produced argon fluoride RF, lithography machines, including a 193 nanometers light source, a resolution less than or equal to 65 nanometers, and an overlay less than or equal to 8 nanometers further narrowing the gap with ASML. Domestic etching machines have achieved a precision of 5 nanometers, not only leading the world, but also entering TSMC's supply chain. 28 nanometers ion implantation machines have also been achieved. Domestic semiconductor equipment manufacturer Nora saw a 35% increase in revenue and a 44% increase in net profit, ranking it among the top six global semiconductor equipment manufacturers and beginning to compete with European, American, Japanese, and Korean companies. Domestic wafer fabs have also begun to use domestically produced equipment on a large scale. Yangtze Memory Technologies' domestic equipment share has increased from less than 16% to nearly 45%, and plans to launch a purely domestic chip production line in the second half of this year. SMIC's domestic equipment share has also increased to 25%, and it has begun to import lithography machines from Shanghai Microelectronics. China's share of mature chip production has also increased to 37%. Analysts predict that by 2030, this share will reach 47%, making it the world's largest. Against the backdrop of the Sino-US chip war, and as the US continues to tighten export controls, domestically produced semiconductor equipment is steadily eroding the market share of European, 
and American companies in core equipment such as lithography machines and etching machines. The semiconductor equipment sector, historically dominated by US, European and Japanese companies, is undergoing subtle changes that will have profound implications for the global chip industry.